Look at that. That's right, survivors. In the next content update, we get to see gloves on our hands. Let's get to it. Hello fellow survivors and welcome to another campfire chat talking about the next part of the DLC and a quality of life update coming to the long dark. We have a lot of things to go through and talk about so strap yourself in and have a coffee maybe in a hinterland mug. We'll get to that and uh, we're just going to go through it. I will say before we get into it, a uh, quick note, I'm going to do this video a little bit different than I do the other Campfire Tales. I'm more or less going to explain it to you live. I have read the Dev Diary already, but I'm going to go through it again and show some of the... It's me scrolling through it. Normally I record this uh, multiple times and then I edit a bunch of stuff in and I I'm not going to do that, that as much this time. Uh, just because of time constraints, I'm quite busy with the baby and also I would like to have this video out as fast as possible because it's fresh news isn't it so we're gonna do it a little bit differently i hope that's all right so <clears throat> let's just get into it this is the september dev diary there wasn't one in august or july or well, there was one in june which more or less is said that they're gonna not stick to the original release schedule and what we got here is we got quite a few big things i'll just summarize them briefly for you now which is that we got a new region coming we got a big quality of life up uh, update uh, we got gloves <laughs> are now visible and the merch store is reopening Ooh, kind of and that's gonna be cool so let's hop into it and starting with the quality of life update so the quality of life update is one that's going to be released i believe prior to part four of the tales uh content and what it is is basically a massive bug fix so with the release of the DLC, there's been numerous bugs happening in the game. Some small, some big. And these have been polished out over time. Like, for example, remember the time when the bear and Forsaken Airfield were just constantly sleeping on the rock, for example. That's now fixed. Um, there's things like items duplicating. And uh, at the moment, one of the big bugs, I think, is like as dead sleep. The challenge is really not working correctly. There's a lot of differences in there that shouldn't be there uh, the weather's too nice the animals are often not there and that sort of thing so there's a lot of bug fixes uh, bugs sorry and they're gonna release a big patch that fixes over 150 bugs which is amazing so that's gonna make the game overall a lot more fluid and uh, it's gonna feel much better uh, i haven't noticed the bugs too much there are some but for the most part it's all right but this is great it's always best to have a game polished so it's going to look much better soon. And this should come at the end of the month. So in uh, probably probably in a couple of weeks from now or so, we should get an uh, update that fixes a lot of these bugs. So look forward to that. I always appreciate quality of life updates. And I am pretty sure that there will be minor changes to the game that are not specified in this dev diary. That happens all the time that the Hintland releases a quality of life update where they fix a bunch of stuff and then they also change little bits but they don't say it you know a very good example is when they released episode four and then they added that you can now climb ropes and uh, climbing rocks with a torch in hand and that wasn't anywhere <laughs> it wasn't written anywhere um, and then there's some other things like uh, they changed how the baseball cap looks in the game, but that wasn't said anywhere. Or well, they always do little minor things, but they don't say what it is. And then you just discover it for yourself. But anyway, that's great. Quality of life update is always welcome. Then we have the DLC part four. That's part four out of six, by the way. There should be six. And uh, this one is to do with the mine. So there are three regions being added with the DLC. It's the Forsaken Airfield, the Industrial Mine and Mountain Pass. Now Industrial Mine and Mountain Pass are placeholder names. It may not be called that. So here they refer to as <coughs> the mine region actually. They don't necessarily say the name of the region. So we'll see what, what it's actually called. 
Um, and then that's going to be released in the next part of the DLC. They released this concept art, which is quite cool. Um, basically one of these, like, it looks more like a quarry rather than a mine, where they dig in the open mountain, so to speak, but it looks to be quite high up. And you got some charred forest, kind of similar to Ash Canyon here on the right as well. So it's a quite uh, cool concept art. We don't really know much about it. Uh, you, we do know it. you access it through the hub or the transfer pass because there's a sign there on the road showing you that it's that way. It's just that the road is blocked. And that's how you'll get there. You obviously need to buy the DLC to, to get this. But that's going to be exciting. Presumably this will be a region with quite a few man-made uh, structures. And I'm guessing there's going to be a, quite a complicated mine you can enter as well. Uh, something akin to the gold mine in Blackrock, which is kind of complicated and big. I think it'd be something like that or even bigger. So we'll see. So that's uh, it. Then they're adding a whole bunch of other things, which is interesting. They're going to add the second tail, which is uh, uh, part two or three. There's three tails they're going to add. That's why it's called Tales of the Far Territory, mind you, which follows up on Signal Void. That doesn't necessarily mean that you need to use the radio to do it. We don't really know. But it's a continuation of Single Void. Single Void is an in-game story. You have to have the DLC and the radio to do it. And it's quite confusing. It's very enigmatic what's going on. It's just some bunch of researchers and bunkers looking at something. And um, you probably will connect to these tales. And between the tales and Episode 5, I think the Single Void will make sense. Then they're also adding, this is a big one, they're adding several new gameplay tools and mechanics, including the Travoy and some new clothing. Ooh, the Travoy is the sled, and that has been asked for so many times. So many times people say, oh, I wish I could add a sled to this game. And even uh, not long ago, I had a giveaway where I asked people, what is the one thing you would add to this game? And a lot of people said, I would like to add the sled, even though a sled is actually coming. And uh, this is a big one. They announced this way back when. But this is something that uh, people have been looking forward to. It's presumably an item <clears throat> that you have to create. And then I have no idea how it works, but I'm presuming that you can put a bunch of stuff on it and then you drag it. Uh, kind of like, well, you can't run while you drag it. Um, and it only works on like flat surfaces or at least not too slopey surfaces. I can predict that when the Travo Travoy or Trava whatever comes out, it will be a bit buggy. I think that uh, I think that it will be a little bit of an issue because something like that where you drag something like a trailer almost is bound to have some bugs in the beginning. I can just picture people walking up a hill they're not supposed to and then it tips over or it glitches through the floor or something. So that's an item that I wouldn't be too surprised if it has a bit of a rocky launch. So just be aware of that when it's added. And maybe it'll go flawless. It depends on how it works. But I can just picture that something like that would be difficult to add to the game in a flawless way. So it might be polished later, which of course is fine. And then you have another big addition, which I did announce before. This is a big one. A lot of people have commented on in the past over the years. And that is that you have coverings on your hands, which is that now you can see your gloves. And in the past, this is something a lot of people have commented on, including on my videos. They say, you know, one thing that really breaks immersion for them is that you don't have gloves. <clears throat> so you put gloves on in the character screen, but then when you load a gun or fire a bow or whatever, you don't have gloves on. And of course, I understand why that's the case, because it's a pain to animate all that stuff. There's also all sorts of different gloves in the game, including like wraps you can make and all sorts of stuff. There's all sorts of things um, that um, <laughs> that uh, makes this like understandable why it wasn't in the game. But now they have added it. So now you have these um, the gloves will actually show when you use it, which is fantastic. That's, that's really cool. And actually, um, it's not just gloves. It says, it says in the description, it says proper coverings for first person hands, right? But if you look very closely at the animation, actually, um, you can tell, for example, with the bow, that what the character is wearing is that uh, wool plate one or whatever, the green and uh, brown thing. 
uh, up here on the with the revolver. I think they're wearing like a light shell or something. And I think uh, the green one is uh, is probably the um, which one's that like again? That's the other light shell. That's green windbreaker or something. Green windbreaker. Uh, unless it's just like Astrid and Will stuff, but it doesn't look like it. There's three different things. So I think that actually the uh, and and the I think that actually they're adding clothing as well, which would be interesting. That's very very cool. That's a complicated interaction to make. Uh, so that's uh, impressive. I didn't expect them to ever add this to the game because it's something that's too complicated. But that they have added is just fantastic. So this is a really cool thing. It, it was possible to get this before with a mod, but it didn't look nearly as good as this. This looks fantastic. So uh, this is a big surprise. But yeah, I like it. It's very good. Also, by the way, good shot with the with the bowler. <laughs> Whoever's playing. Okay. So there's all sorts of... Now, of course, there's other things also. We, they don't say it. They just say, you know, new gameplay tools and mechanics. So they're obviously adding more things. This happens every time. They're going to add other things too. Like there'll be some new food items or a new gear of some sort or something. But they won't say what it is until later because it's not part of the major updates. Uh, so that will come on time. And I guarantee you that when this patch comes out, there will be things in the game that has been changed or added that we didn't see in this dev diary too. They do that all the time. Uh, so yeah, so that's it for that really. And then there's a big thing here about the merch store. So, so many people have asked Hintland, when is the store reopening? And it has been uh, closed for a long time, you know, a long time. And uh, actually, uh, I, I recently opened my own merch store, just throwing that in there. And uh, I had those uh, enamel mugs and that really sold. And I think that's because it's similar to like the long dark mug you can get, uh, which I actually have one of, uh, which is super nice of Hintlin. Uh, when my channel reached 10,000 subscribers, Hintlin sent me uh, one of the mugs which they had in storage, which was super nice of them. They also had a competition, I think it was last year, where it was um, cosplay. And uh, the the winners got one of those mugs. So they have had them around, but they haven't had the store open in a long time. I don't even remember when it closed. I think it was around COVID. So I think it was like three years ago. And what they're saying now is they're actually going to reopen it, but they are redesigning the entire website and it, my impression is they're also redesigning the merch. So they're going to launch a new site which has new merch. And uh, the thing is that they're not going to... If I understand this dev diary correct here, they're not going to make more of the items that were in the old store, which is things like the posters uh, the, and the mugs and that sort of thing. Uh, instead, there could be new things. The reason I think that is because they say that until the new merch comes on they will at some point have a pop-up store so they'll basically relaunch the old store and they will sell what's left of the old items which they call now legacy items so posters hoodies hatchets and mugs so that suggests to me that basically at some point near christmas they're going to relaunch the store and they will have limited supply they're basically this is what we got left and go for it and then they'll sell it and then they're not going to make any more of it at least not for now and then when they have the new site they will then have new merch whether or not these items are in that store is unknown but it sounds to me like it's not so if you want to get those hintlin uh, mugs and things uh, be ready definitely sign up for the mailing list that is a good idea because then you'll be told when it comes out and then you can just hop in and buy it because it sounds to me like this is going to be um, uh, a one-off, it seems like, yeah. Now, uh, another thing is they're talking about new projects. I'm not going to talk about this too much because there's not that much to say about it, but the gist of it is Hinton has been working on new 
uh, games, and they've said that for at least a year now. And uh, the gist of what they have, they say here, without going into too much detail, is that they basically have three projects that they're working on, and two of them are quite large. Um, and it, that's not going. They're not going to reveal anything about it for for some time because it's still being worked on. But they do have a smaller project, which is a sci-fi game which will be revealed within roughly the next six months. So it sounds like a smaller project. <clears throat> and we'll, we'll be told what that is, but it's going to be very, very different from The Long Dark. And that's pretty much it. Uh, just There's not much else to say, except that um, we know that at least one of these projects is also in the Unreal 5 engine, because that's something that they have announced in the past. So there, there is that. Uh, one minor thing though, <clears throat> there was one sentence in this that caught my eye, um, which I don't know if they meant it the way I'm reading this, but it says, uh, we need to have something new ready by the time the long dark is finished next year. Okay, so I don't know exactly what this means, but I presume that, that makes it sound like next year is the end of all updates for the long dark, as in the game is 100% done next year um which makes kind of sense but also doesn't make sense so it makes sense in the sense that next year is episode five and when episode five is out you have the end of winter mute and that's the end of the story so to speak and uh, that would follow that that's kind of like the end of the long dark right and by the at some point next year also not sure when but like early to mid next year all of the DLC content will be out as well. So then everything has been added. So that makes sense that it's uh, finished, I guess. But what is a bit confusing about this is that uh, it kind of implies that there won't be any more content updates after that, which I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, if that is the case, that's fine, because as I have said before, the Long Dark is just perfect the way it is now, so if they didn't add anything to it, still a great game. But um, they did say earlier in the Dev Diaries that the Tales from the Far Territory was like an experiment, and if it worked out, if people liked the DLC, then they might do something like that again. So that would suggest to me that when the DLC is finished, they might make more content, than in, maybe in the form of a DLC, or maybe in the form of just some uh, updates of con content updates. We don't really know. But it sounded to me like that's something they would consider. On the other hand, they have said that this game has grown way beyond was, what it was meant to. They've added so much content over the year, more than they expected. Uh, so this is probably also a game that it should reach an end point at some point. At some point, you know, you should you can stop making new content for it. But of course, you, you want to stay on top of the game and polish it and give quality of life updates and stuff too, of course, and make it better. Polish out bugs and that sort of thing. Um, but even if that's true, if it is true that the game is finished and then th does not update it next year, you know, we're still going to keep playing it. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever stop playing this game unless they make a Long Dark 2, which supersedes it, similar to like how Overwatch 2 superseded Overwatch 1, so you can't really play Overwatch 1 as such anymore. Uh, so I always keep playing it. So I'm not sure exactly what they meant by this, but um, <clears throat> either way, whether they uh, completely wrap up the Long Dark next year, um, or if they keep adding stuff, uh, either way is fine, because the game is just fantastic, and yeah, if they stopped updating right now, I would still play it. Even with the bugs, I would still play it, you know. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, that was the main thing that caught my eye on this one. And then episode 5, a lot of people want to play episode 5, you know, a lot of people are very into the story. And it's going to come in 2024, we don't know when yet, but uh, uh, before the end of the year, uh, Raph will reveal some more stuff about it, like some art and what the title is and some other things. And it's going to be quite a big one because I think the idea here is that episode 5 will probably be released after the DLC, and it's going to tie everything together. So it's going to tie together all of the other episodes, but also the tales in the DLC and that sort of thing. And it's kind of like tie a knot around everything. So it's a big project. You've got to put everything together. So it's quite a large thing to, to do. 
therefore it, not surprisingly it's a as he says the biggest yet so it's going to be a big episode uh, seems like end of 2024 yeah and then that's it and that's it for the dev diary and that's it for my reflection on it so the quality of life comes out soon they haven't said uh when part four comes out this is in the coming months i'm probably going to come out in october november then i guess we don't know exactly but september will have the quality of life update and then we're going to get quite a few things in the in the update with the uh the dlc uh such as the mines and the tail and all sorts of things now i don't know but I'm, they don't say it but i'm guessing um that the gloves is actually a free content uh and not uh, not the dlc uh but it doesn't specify which is which but that would that would make sense oh and by the way one thing i forgot to mention is something that's absent in this dev die which is any mention of switch so unfortunately there's no news there switch users still do not have the dlc and we don't know yet when this is going to be resolved all we know is that they are working on it uh, so yeah it looks like a, a fun update I really look forward to it think it's going to be great uh, a lot of neat little things uh, we'll, always fun to have a new region that's always great the gloves and stuff is a fantastic addition a little thing that's not necessary but it it adds a lot of quality and then of course the sled and other things so we'll, we'll see how it goes I'm very, I'm very excited to play it and you and i will do as i always do which is that when a new region comes out i play it blindly so if you want to see that it's still going to be a few months from now but when the dlc does come out the new region comes out i'm gonna hop in there on interloper blind not knowing anything about it and see if i can survive i did that with forsaken airfield and i managed just fine uh so i'm gonna try that again with the new region that's gonna be fun <laughs> okay that's enough for now i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you look forward to the content and stay safe out there survivors bye bye